Hi, um, I'm a secondary school teacher by trade, which is uh, not for the faint-hearted, uh, admittedly. Uh, I've taught in some interesting, varied and challenging environments over the years. Uh, that was certainly true of the not so salubrious academic institution where I had the dubious pleasure of completing my first student teaching placement. I'll not sully the reputation of this school by naming it because it is by all accounts a, a fine establishment these days. However, back in the day, back before everyone went soft, back when assisted technologies consisted of a Casio calculator, when there were blackboards instead of whiteboards, when there were smoke-filled staff rooms imbued with a gallows humour that was darker than a pint of stout, back when everyone was desperately trying to keep things uh, normal in the one place where kids could feel safe from the sporadic chaos of pre-peace process inner city Belfast. And back when this particular seat of learning had a reputation for being as tough as teak among the local teaching fraternity. My placement was to run from the beginning of October right up to Christmas. I remember my first day quite vividly. It was a crisp sunny morning which accentuated the early burst of autumnal coloration in the tree-lined street. Or ordinarily, I could have fully appreciated the beauty of such a morning had it not been for my preoccupation with what fate would await me at the poison chalice of teaching placements, as one of my peers had described it. I went more in fear and trepidation than, in, than with any sense of eager anticipation. First appearances probably didn't help, to be fair. It was a traditional early 60s red brick school building, uh, built in, the in a quadrant around a courtyard with an old Victorian house sitting like a surreal anomaly in the middle. This is where the principal's office and administrative hub were, where the staff room was upstairs. It was a lovely building, had it not been almost entirely obscured by the austere school buildings which encased it. Christ, I thought, this place is more reminiscent of a state penitentiary than a school. As it turned out, I had a gentle enough introduction to the school which gave me time to meet my new colleagues and pick up one or two insightful observations about the changing dynamic within the school at that time. I realized that a new, a new principal had been appointed, headhunted apparently, and that he was determined to reverse the school's flagging fortunes and waning reputation, come hell or high water. He was a very determined individual with boundless energy and enthusiasm, which was precisely the problem for some of the old hands in the staff room. He was changing things and unsettling them from their well-worn routines. He was going to have his work cut out to transform this lot, I thought. Although my sympathies were with them in the main, they were a fantastic bunch to work with, protective, loyal, witty, and often searingly funny. They were hardworking and very professional too, in a distinctly old school type of way. However, for the new principal, the school was in a rut. It was stagnating. He wanted more dynamism, more innovation, more progress, more dedication, more everything. Some of the new initiatives went down well, like enforcing proper school uniform. It was when he started meddling with teachers' timetables or the well-settled curriculum that colours became ruffled. One of the things that the new principal would insist upon was the restoration of a long-lapsed school tradition, the Christmas show complete with carol singing and the nativity play. Not only had the nativity not been performed in many a year, even the school choir was virtually defunct by this point. The assembly hall had been used for very little outside of PE activities for quite some time. It had a proper stage and everything, but it had become a bit of a dumping ground for assorted PE equipment, broken desks, and other school detritus. This was going to be a monumental task to resuscitate this particular tradition. The majority of the staff remained resolutely cynical. They knew what they were up against. The boys won't have it, they said. It'll be a disaster. He hasn't got a Scooby-Doo. One fundamental issue was raised. Who'd play the part of Mary? One acerbic suggestion was to have Big Aidan from year 12 play Mary. All six foot three of them and 20 stones of them. I, I can see it from both viewpoints. I understood the principal's quest to raise standards and expectations. However, I had also gained an insight into what the teachers were up against. 
dealing with poor behaviour was routine and endemic. And no matter how hard they tried, educational outcomes remained resolutely poor and expectations were infused with a dose of realism. Some of these boys were coming from the most socially deprived areas of Belfast and in an era when the Troubles was still maintaining its insidious grip on Northern Ireland society. As if to remind me of what the staff were up against, there was an episode in the staff from the week before the planned Christmas show which highlighted the realities. A teacher of French, let's call him Peter, entered the staff room, sat down at a desk and proceeded to theatrically bump his head off the desk repeatedly, Basil Fawlty style. What's wrong now? A colleague wearily inquired. Peter replied, I give up. I've seen and heard it all now. I was doing the French orals with the year 12s. We Tommy Devane comes in and I remind him about all the protocols and everything before I hit the record button. He reassures me that he was revising all the questions at the weekend and is feeling very confident. Good man, I said. So we start the oral and he flies through all the introductory stuff. Je m'appelle Tommy, blah, blah, blah. Then I ask him, en français, what are your favorite hobbies and pastimes? He looks at me blankly, totally bereft. I'm out of my chair, pretending to head a football, disco dancing, like a buck agent. It was like a game of fucking Pictionary. Suddenly, suddenly, he gives me the thumbs up. Like he's just had that light bulb moment. Then he speaks. He proceeded to give the entire answer in English, but with a French accent. I shit you not. It was like a bloody episode of Hello Hello for Christ's sakes. Ooh, I like to play the football and then we go dancing with my friends. This went on for the rest of the mock and Tommy looked exceedingly pleased with himself at the end. I give up. I just give up. Although hilarious, this incident encapsulated what these guys were up against in many ways. And so did the Christmas nativity itself. Everything had gone surprisingly smoothly in the run-up to the big evening. The choir had been reconstituted and had, apparently, nailed a full repertoire of carols and hymns. The caretakers had worked overtime to clear the clutter from the stage. The art and drama departments had performed wonders with the stage set and in preparing the budding thespians for the nativity. They'd even managed to recruit a Mary. Mercifully, not a six, six foot three one, the local MP had been invited, as had the deputy mayor and even the bishop. This would be the perfect showcase for the school's burgeoning renaissance. Everyone was seated. The packed hall was spruced up and shining. There was a frisson of anticipation and excitement in the air. Suddenly, there was a rush of activity backstage. Then the drama teacher, looking rather flushed and concerned, made her way towards the principal beckoning him from his seat. I wondered what was up. It was obvious that something was wrong. It was then I could hear a ripple of laughter coming from some of my colleagues seated in the rows in front of me. What's going on, I inquired. The technology teacher in front of me replied, apparently someone's stolen the baby Jesus from the crib in the nativity scene and they've even left a ransom note. The ransom note read, Leave three Kit Kats under the school Christmas tree or the kid gets it. Well, you know what they say. Rome wasn't built in a day or even in a school term, it would seem. Happy Christmas. Oh, Fargo, that is just great. Um, I'm not going to ask you what school it is, but I actually <laughs> think I know one of those boys because I had a housemate years ago who told me that him and his friends stole the baby Jesus. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, may, I'm sure that well, there that are... just proves it's true. <laughs> it just proves it's true. I'm sure there are a variety of schools around Belfast where that was done. What they did, though, mm -hmm. he said that one of the boys in his gang was a little bit, um, you know, more gung-ho than the rest of them. And <laughs> he, he broke off one of the fingers and sent it in an envelope to the headmaster. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't your school. <laughs> 
Well, I don't recall that bit, but yeah, it, it, that, that would be par for the course, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't well, be surprised. You were, you were phenomenally discreet to not give the school away because we're sure it is a magnificent establishment of learning it is, it is. and French culture, um, even with French language, not only French accents. <laughs>